Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. We're going to talk about the ratio test, which is a test for the convergence of series. We're going to let a sub n, the sum of the a sub n's, be a series with, of non-zero terms. And we can say that um, this series will converge absolutely when the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio of the terms a sub n plus 1 over a sub n absolute value is less than 1. We can say that it diverges if that limit happens to be greater than 1 or equal to infinity. And we can say that the test is inconclusive when the limit actually equals 1. Just to remind you what converges absolutely means, um, that just means that the series itself and the series of absolute values of the terms will both converge. This particular test is very helpful with factorial and exponential functions. So in this first segment, what we're going to do is look at how to simplify some complicated um, ratios of fact involving factorials and exponentials. So here we're asked to verify this formula that says 2k minus 2 factorial over 2k factorial is equal to 1 over 2k times 2k minus 1. So the key here is just really to understand what a factorial is, first of all. So let's use numbers instead of variables for a minute. Just remind you that 6 factorial just means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. If you were to say, add 1 to the 6 before taking the factorial, what effect does that have? Well, now you're just going to go up to 1 more than 6, right? So you'd go 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, but then we'd also go 1 more to 7, or 6 plus 1, which is 7. Okay, and let's say that we subtracted 2 from the 6. Well, that's really 4 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Notice that this 4 is the 6 minus 2 value, and that we end up with a product that is missing two of the terms, the 6 and the 5. So now let's think about what 2k minus 2 and 2k factorial mean, and how they relate to each other. So 2k minus 2 factorial is a smaller factorial. It's going to have two fewer terms than 2k factorial does. In other words, 2k factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 2k. This guy, 2k minus 2, is not as big. It goes 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 2k minus 2, a smaller number. If we want to compare these two products, we have to remember that with since this is the larger product, somewhere inside of it is 2k minus 2. In particular, we could include a few more terms, the term, or factors, excuse me, the factor less than 2k, uh, which is 2k minus 1, and one more less than that, 2k minus 2. And you see where this is actually just the 2k minus 2 factorial hidden within the larger uh, product. So when you see um, an expression like this, what you want to think about is expanding the bigger factor factorial product until you can actually see the smaller one. And um, so we could do something like this, 2k minus 2 factorial over 2k factorial equals and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to keep the smaller one the same, 2k minus 2 factorial. And I see that 2k factorial is 2k minus 2 factorial times two more terms, 2k minus 1 and just 2k. So the 2k minus 2 factorials divide out to leave a factor of 1, and we have what we were looking for. Let's look at another example. So this one's a lot more complicated, and it's going to require that we use the principle of mathematical induction in order to show that the left side is equal to the right. Notice that this statement we are trying to prove is true for k greater than or equal to 3. The reason for that is if you actually plug 1 into 2k minus 5, you get a negative. 
Uh, so that doesn't make sense for a factorial. Um, and we can't go from 1 up to a negative. And then if we plug in 2, we also get a negative. So we, we can't do that. So we're just starting at 3. Now when we use mathematical induction, all that means is that you show it's true for one value of k. Then you assume it's true for the nth value and use that to prove that it must be true for the n plus first value. So you get this kind of domino effect. So first we start with and um, k equals 3, which is the first uh, term for which this makes sense. So when k is 3, we know that 2k, 2 times 3 minus 5, is just going to be 1. So in fact, it's just going to be 1 over 1 is supposed to be equal to, let's see if it is, 2 to the third times 3 factorial times, we have 2 times 3 so 6 minus 3, and 2 times 3, so 6 minus 1, over 2 times 3, so 6 factorial. All right, working that out, we have 1 is supposed to be equal to, we have 8 times 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6, times 3 times, oops, 5. times 5, and that's all supposed to be over 6 factorial. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. And we see the 6's divide out, the 5's divide out, 3's divide out, 2 and 4 go into 8 once, so we have 1 over 1. So 1 equals 1, and we're, we've proven that at least this equality holds when k is 3. So. Now we have the ability to use induction. What we do is we assume that this is true for k equals n. So what do I mean by that? I mean that we are assuming the following statement is true. The original statement really, but just with n's. So 1 over 1 times 3 times 5 times all the way up to 2n minus 5. And we're assuming that that's true is that will equal 2 to the n times n factorial times 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 1 over 2n factorial. Okay, so this is the assumption that we're making. If it's true for one of these, then what we want to show is it's true for n plus 1. k equals n plus 1. So let's write down what we want to show. Okay, what we want to show is that when, since it's true for k equals n, that it must be true for k equals n plus 1. So we want to show that 1 over 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2 times n plus 1 minus 5 is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial times 2 times n plus 1 minus 3 times 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 all over 2 times n plus 1 factorial. Let's simplify that a bit. So um, what we're really trying to show is that we want 1 over 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to, this is 2n plus 2 minus 5, so 2n minus 3. We want that to equal, um, let's see, we have 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial. 2n plus 2 minus 3 would be 2n minus 1. 2n plus 2 minus 1 would be 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 2 factorial. Okay, so remember, the way that we are going to get from the left side of the equation to the right is to use our assumption that it's true for k equals n. So let's compare um, for k equals n, what's the difference here? When k equals n, we have this expression going up to 2n minus 5, which is slightly smaller than 2n minus 3. So within this larger um, product, we, somewhere in there, uh, especially since we're going by, uh, skipping by twos, 
um, right next, right one factor less than 2n minus 3 is going to be 2 less than that, which is 2n minus 5. So what we're going to observe is that this is the same as 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2n minus 5 times 2n minus 3. Again, because this pattern is skipping by 2s, so we have 2 less than negative 3 is negative 5. Okay, so why is that important? Because this portion of this product, 1 over this guy here, is actually the same as the left side of the k equals n assumption. So what we have is that this is equal to, think of this as being multiplied by 1 over 2n minus 3. So this is going to be 1 over 1 times 3 times 5 Oh, let's, I've already got that. Let's just write the next part, save space. Okay, so what this portion is going to be equal to is the right side of the k equals n assumption. So we're going to write 2 to the n times n factorial times 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 1 over 2n factorial times that extra factor there of 1 over 2n minus 3. Okay, now the 2n minus 3 will cancel, uh, the 2n minus 3 in the numerator will cancel with the 1 in the denominator, so we can cross that off. Now we want to keep in mind what we want, right? Always keep your goal in mind. So what we're wanting to show, we somehow want to get to this point right here. So right now we have 2 to the n and we have n factorial instead of 2 to the n plus 1 and n plus 1 factorial. But in the denominator, notice that what we want has actually a, a greater product. We want the 2n plus 2 factorial. Right now we have the 2n. So what I'm going to do to head in that direction is I'm going to think, hmm, what extra factors do I need to multiply the denominator by to get up to 2n plus 2? Well, I would need 2n plus 1 and I would need 2n plus 2. So I'm going to take my expression 2n n factorial 2n minus 1 over 2n factorial and I'm going to multiply it times the missing factors that I need to get to the 2n plus 2. So we would need a 2n plus 1 and we're going to need a 2n plus 2. But we can't just do it in the bottom, right? So we're going to multiply in the top as well. So we're really just multiplying by 1. And let's see what happens here. In the denominator then, we have 1 through 2n being multiplied, and then 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. So we got what we wanted now. It's the entire product 2n plus 2 factorial. In the numerator, we have um, 2 to the n times n factorial times 2n minus 1. Um, notice that uh, we want to have a 2n minus 1 in our final answer up here, so that's good. We also have a 2n plus 1, so that's good. We need that too. Um, but then we have this extra factor of 2n plus 2. So somehow we have to use this 2n plus 2 to get to raise the exponent on the 2 to an n plus 1 and to raise the factorial from an n factorial to an n plus 1. And so if you notice, this guy here is really 2 times n plus 1. So we can, we can multiply the 2 times the 2 to the n. That'll give us a 2 to the n plus 1. And we can multiply the n plus 1 times the n factorial. That gives you your n plus first factor in the n plus 1 factorial. So this is equal to 2 to the n plus 1. Let me write it over here. It's equal to 2 to the n plus 1. times, instead of n factorial, we're multiplying n factorial times n plus 1, so we're getting n plus 1 factorial, times 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 2 factorial, which is what we wanted. So we showed that the left-hand side is equal to the right, 
and um, therefore the fact that k equals n works means that n plus 1 has to work. So since we know it works for k equals 3, and k equals n implies k equals n plus 1, that's exactly what induction says needs to happen. And so we can conclude that the equality holds. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it. The next video, we will actually use the ratio test to prove um, convergence and divergence.